You know that one about uh, Winston Churchill said, didn't he? An appeaser is one who feeds a crocodile, hoping that it will eat him last. And that's what happened to Theresa May. Only it looks like somewhat she's been eaten first. The, according to a report in The Guardian and everywhere else, Theresa May was trying to save her checkers Brexit plan and they say with it her authority as Prime Minister. After she was ambushed at the end of the Salzburg summit when EU leaders unexpectedly declared that her proposals would not work. Unexpe unexpected to whom? Well, maybe unexpected to the Guardian, but not unexpected to me. And I'm quite sure not unexpected to about 99.9% .9 of any of you guys watching this video. On Thursday night, the Transport Secretary hit back for the government, declaring there were no changes to the Chequers plan on the table and the EU's demands on Northern Ireland were impossible. Well, yes, we know the EU's demands were going to be impossible because it is not in the EU's interests to cooperate or to be creative or to help in any way or to reach a proper agreement. The EU's purpose in all of this is to punish because Britain has decided to leave their precious project. A clearly nervous and angry May told reporters that EU leaders were engaged in negotiating tactics designed to throw her off course. No, no, they are engaged in punishment tactics. When are you going to get the message. There is no way of negotiating with these people. You know, I'm going to invoke Godwin's law here. That's what Chamberlain came up with when he went to Hitler. And what did Hitler say about him when he'd gone after he'd signed that bit of paper? MI5 told Neville Chamberlain that Hitler had called him an asshole. And he still thought that he could reach an accommodation with that man. I'm not suggesting, by the way, that anyone in the EU is Adolf Hitler. What I'm saying is when somebody is set on a course, when they want to make a war or take territory or pursue a socialist project or an internationalist project of some sort, then they will do it. There is no appeasing them. So they're not negotiating tactics. They are power plays. And I don't know what the EU think they're going to do because, you know, you push Britain into a corner. That's not going to help. And to a certain extent, they, I think they've overplayed their hand. I certainly hope so. It says here, the Prime Minister told reporters that Chequers was the only way to ensure that trade could flow freely across the Irish border after 2019. I, I'm explaining uh, to people who may not be aware of this. Ireland used to be part of the United Kingdom. And then there was an Irish separatist movement. And Britain hung on to Northern Ireland because it was mostly Protestants in there, and the argument was that the Catholics would mistreat the Protestants, and there was a good deal of evidence at the time to say they would. Now, the border, between, after the various peace processes that have gone on, the border between the Northern Ireland and, and ERA, the Republic of Ireland, has been very porous. There's, you know, no checkpoints, a lot of cross-border trade, and before it was cross-border smuggling. <laughs> There's no real difference. And since the Republic of Ireland is still in the EU, uh, there would have to be, uh, it is argued, 
a, a more stringent border between the two, which will uh, cause trouble. And this is part of Theresa May's problems. I'm not saying that it's a completely trouble-free process. Nothing in politics ever is cut and dried. But something could be arranged if the EU were prepared to help out. You know, the, this, it, it's very odd, this. I've often considered the, um, the state of Israel. Now, in 1948, when the state was declared, there was a rush of Arab countries trying to defeat it and wipe it off the map. Uh, the people in Israel at the time, many of them were refugees with the only possessions being the clothes they stood up in. A lot of them were demoralized. Many of them had lost entire families. They were not in a very good psychological state, I suppose. And the country was very poor. It was also extremely underpopulated. I don't know what the figures were like, but I don't know. I think there was something like 400,000 people. I'll look it up at the end of this video and, uh, and put the, the number up uh, on the screen. The Arabs attacked and the Jews knew that there would be nothing left if they didn't fight. So they did fight and they fought very hard. In fact, they fought so hard they actually pushed the Arabs back, which was a big surprise to everyone. And they weren't getting much help from anyone. They certainly weren't getting help from America or Britain. They managed to smuggle some arms, I think, from Czechoslovakia or stuff they'd managed to capture. It was a big surprise when they prevailed. And after that, the Arabs slammed their fists on the table and said, we're going to seal those borders. And they did. And because of that, Israel was in a, a sort of pressure cooker environment. If the Arabs had said upon declaration of the Jewish state, oh, that's wonderful, welcome to the Middle East, it's nice to see some people with some European know-how here, and fellow Semites, you are our brothers, let's cooperate, let's get together. What would have happened? All the Jews who had previous experience in business would have gone to on the across the open borders to Amman and Damascus and Cairo because that's where the businesses were. That's where the infrastructure was set up. There wasn't any infrastructure to speak of in in Israel at the time when it just started out. Israel would have disintegrated from the start. But because the Arabs sealed the borders, they forced Israel not only to become strong, but to become self-sufficient. Israel has a, one of the strongest armies in the world, and that's only because they have to fight the Arabs. Otherwise, they wouldn't have bothered. They would have used their money on other projects. Because a military is an extremely expensive liability. That's what's going on in Germany right now. They, they've they been relying on the Americans all the time so they can use their money for all sorts of social projects rather than uh, keeping their military strong. And now they need the rest of Europe to buffer them. That's why they're hanging on to Europe. Back to Israel. Israel was created not by the Jews but by the Arabs. And Britain, after Brexit, that will be created or recreated by the EU, not by themselves. When you have that sort of a pressure to push against, you either cave in or you get stronger. And Britain has the fourth, I think, the fourth largest economy in the world. They're not going to cave in. And the EU are making a huge mistake. And Theresa May is making a huge mistake by not understanding that. However, no deal Brexit is better than bad deal Brexit. And I think that's what we're going to end up having. And I think that's pretty good.
I'm very grateful for financial contributions. But if you don't want to give money, you can still help a lot by sharing this and other videos I've made. Also, remember to check your subscription from time to time, as sometimes subscriptions get erased for one reason or another. Till next time.